We're here today with Jennifer Cotillo of jennifercotillo.com. Jennifer is a body awareness specialist who focuses on using body awareness to improve your riding through various modalities, including Balamo and Pilates. Jennifer's new DVD, Improving Your Riding with Movement, will be released in 2013. So Jennifer, can you tell me a little bit about how you came to discover Pilates and how it changed your life and your riding? Sure, it was actually a bit of a fluke. I was actually being a guinea pig for a friend of mine. Um, she was going through massage school and she needed bodies. And I waved my hand and said, pick me, pick me, pick me. And after that, she went on to start teaching or learning to teach Pilates and she needed another guinea pig. And so I was her guinea pig. And the more I took it, the more I realized that Pilates, to me, was like riding without the horse. I was learning all the things um, that everybody says to you when you ride well without the interference of the horse. Um, and it's made a huge difference. I have um, scoliosis, and so my back used to always hurt all the time. And since I've been doing Pilates, it, it hurts every once in a while, but it's significantly less. Um, I also was so crooked, again, because of the scoliosis. I couldn't canter to the left at all. I would have told you I was born without a left seat bone, but I can assure you that that really wasn't the case. That uh, I do have a left seat bone, and I can now canter to the left. How can improved body awareness make me a better rider, even if I'm not a natural? Well, I'm the poster child for that. Um, because my whole life I wanted to ride well. And I worked at it. I took lessons, I read everything, and I didn't ride well. And it was because I truly had no understanding about how my body worked. I am not an innately athletic person. Um, and I had to teach my body as an adult how it was supposed to move and how it actually could move in order to ride well. So if I can do it, anybody can do it. So we all strive for this nirvana of independent aids. How can having a strong core help me have an independent hand and seat and leg? Well, when people don't have a strong core and um, force, i.e. your horse's energy, walk, trot, and cantering, start moving through your body, um, one of two things are gonna happen. Either your body is just a jello and it starts wiggling around and that wiggle in the middle just sort of flails out all over the place and you're up there bound, bounding all over the place and it's you lose your balance or the other thing that happens is you still have a weak core but to combat the bouncing all over you tighten everything up well as soon as you tighten everything up all the motion and the energy of the horse doesn't go through you anymore, but it still catapults you up into the air, so you can't follow the motion of the horse. The only way you can follow the motion of the horse is to have a certain tone to your core, which most people don't have because we sit around all the time and we drive and we work at desk, so we don't have that innately strong core. Um, in order to a be able to take that energy the horse gives you run it through your body, have the stability and flexibility to control that and allow everything else to be relaxed. So I read one of your quick tips on Facebook that talked about still versus stiff. Mm -hmm. My trainer tells me all the time, just do nothing. And I have a terrible time with that. When I'm told to do nothing, I lock up and I get stiff. Where would you start to help me be still and not stiff? Um, it's a very difficult concept for a lot of people. Um, so I actually like to do some exercises with people actually sitting on the ground. I can actually do it in this chair. So if you imagine me riding and my arms are holding the reins, what your arms should feel like is if I put my arms down and relax everything. That's how your arms should feel when I go from sitting them on the table or the arms of this chair to here. They're not tight and stiff. They're soft and relaxed. The bones aren't moving, but the muscles are. 
and that's easier said than done. Uh, most people don't even realize how tight their arms are. So one, another good check to see how tight you are is to really tighten everything up, make as much of a muscle as you can, and then without moving your bones, relax it. We'll show you how soft your arms are or not. Um, another thing I like to do as an instructor is I should be able to walk up to someone or run up to someone when they're riding and very easily fling their elbow and it should move. If I come up to you and move your elbow and it doesn't move, you're too tight. I don't think you could move my elbow if you walked up to me. <laughs> That's right. So another in your DVD series, you also note that correct pelvic position is where the rubber meets the road when it comes to riding. What are some common issues that are associated with incorrect pelvic position? You name an equitation fault, and I would say 90% of the time it's due to a pelvic problem. Um, we've all seen people who collapse to the side, who have one shoulder higher than the other, tip their head, twist their body. All of these things you see on the outside of the body on the head, the arms, the waist, the legs, but 99% of the time, it's the pelvis that's torqued. And if it's torqued just a little bit, that change in position starts to cascade up and down. So it really is where the rubber meets the road. So in general, do you find that problems with pelvic position are more likely to be bad habits and incorrect instruction? or something such as alignment of the spinal column or injuries to tag tendons and ligaments in the area? I would say both, yeah, both, um, or a combination of, or another one is the saddle. Um, if the saddle doesn't allow you to sit perpendicular to the, to the ground, um, it throws your pelvis off. Um, all of those things will cause incorrect muscle memory, and you have to break that muscle memory to retrain things correctly. Um, past injury, spinal alignment, a lot of that you can manage and make better. Sometimes you can't completely correct it. For instance, my scoliosis. I have that curve in my spine. I manage it with my Pilates. I try to get as straight as I possibly can. But that's in there. That's not going to change. Um, if you spend a lot of time sitting like you're sitting with one leg crossed over, and most of us always sit with one leg as opposed to the other, in this position, my pelvis is torqued a little bit. Over time, that muscle memory is ingrained. So even when I straighten my legs out, my pelvis doesn't completely come back to center. So I can work that out. That's not um, a physical problem caused by an injury or something um, biological. But all of them can be managed. So I tend to sit with my right leg crossed over my left. So when I'm taking a jumping lesson, turning to the right, my trainer always shouts, left leg, left leg, left leg. And I'm using all the left leg that I have but my trainer and my horse are not impressed. Would you imagine that my preference to sit right leg over left has Absolutely. anything to do with that? Absolutely, because if you look at me, I'm now sitting with my right leg over my left and my body is slightly twisted to the left. Okay? When you turn to the right, you should be slightly positioned to the right. So if you don't even know it, you start to use your left leg. Your left leg is saying, hey, horse, go to the right. But your torso, which is your main aid, is saying, oh, no, stay going to the left. Your horse is always going to use or respond the most to your most um, influential aid. And your weight aid or your body is definitely a more influential aid than your leg. So what would you, what would be the first exercise you would give me to adjust this tendency that I have to sit, am I sitting to the left? Or am I, I'm sitting to the right, aren't I? 
Yes, when you cross your leg over, you end up sitting to the, le to the right. Okay. All right, so you're not even on both seat bones. Um, there are all kinds of different exercises. Um, one thing that's a really quick fix and people go, are you crazy, are you kidding me? Um, just to show people what even seat bones are, if you're sitting too much on your right seat bone, I will actually prop your right seat bone up. You can do that by raising your right stirrup. It's going to shift your pelvis so that you're even in the middle of the saddle. Once your pelvis is even in the middle of the saddle, even though now your leg length doesn't seem the same, and it's not because you have to lengthen out all of these muscles over time, that's a really quick, easy fix, assuming that that's the only problem that you're having. That may not be the only thing that works. Um, another really fun, easy, and crazy exercise is I call it a hip walk. It's really a seat bone walk. And what I mean by that is you sit down on the floor with your legs out in front of you and you walk forward with your seat bones and then walk back. And you keep doing that. And in order to do that properly and correctly, you have to use all of the muscles around those seat bones, around your hips, and over time it will stretch all those little guys out. So in 2007, I got pregnant and my daughter was born. At some point during my pregnancy, I stopped sitting the trot. And you know my thoroughbred Edgar, he has a very big medium trot. And I've never really gotten comfortable sitting the trot since my daughter's been born. Do you have any tips for me to help me uh, go back to being able to sit that big medium trot that I love so much? Well, that's a tough one. Um, nature, changes women's pelvic alignment in pregnancy and uh, for giving birth. And it actually tilts it into um, a tilt where the front comes forward and the, the bottom goes back. And that is the most difficult pelvic position to sit a trot with. Um, so it's not anything you've done, but it sort of gets cemented there over time. So. What you need to do is lengthen your lower back and strengthen your tummy. So you're gonna do small little tiny crunches that really work this lowest, lowest abdominals right above your pubic bone. And then at the same time, trying to stretch out that lower back. And that can be something as simple as laying on the floor and grabbing both knees and giving yourself a hug and rolling back and forth a little bit to stretch that out. So essentially, the back of your torso has gotten too short and the front has gotten too long, so we need to strengthen the front and lengthen the back. Okay. When you meet a rider in one of your mounted clinics, what's the first thing that you assess? Always their pelvis. Always their pelvis, because I truly believe that so much cascades from that pelvic placement that I could work on all the other things that I see but if the pelvis isn't in the right place, it's all just gonna go back. And then you're, instead of using correct biomechanic physics and all that kind of stuff, to ride well, you're gonna manufacture your riding. And we don't want manufactured riding. We don't wanna pose. We wanna be one with our horse and go with the motion. And the only place to start with that is your pelvis. So in your DVD series, um, Tell me, you have, there are several parts. Mm -hmm. um, tell me a little bit about the, the parts, the different chapters in your DVD series and how they all fit together and how they could, I could work through those um, to get through some of these issues like the sitting trot and um, improving my left leg. Um, well, I think there are plenty of exercise videos out there. So when I started thinking about this, I said, you know, I, I don't wanna do another exercise video but I know that there are a lot of easy to do movements out there that can significantly make your riding more effective and less painful. Um, so I wanted uh, these to be fun and easy to do. That was my first priority. So in each of the three DVDs, there are the exercise area or movement areas are divided into two sections. One, are, one is called the no excuses, 
and the other one is with thought. The no excuses are exactly what they sound like. You have no excuse to do them. You can do them watching TV. You can do them doing a crossword puzzle on your back. You don't have to give it any thought. You don't have to have special clothes, special equipment, nothing. You can just lay there and do these little movements. No muss, no fuss, and I guarantee they'll improve your riding. If you do want to spend a little more thought and maybe do work out a little bit more, but they, they still are not workout videos, you can go ahead and do the with thought sections. They're a little bit longer. They're a little bit more involved. Um, but either way, um, either section or taking a little bit of both or finding out what you feel works best for you and doing those literally five minutes a day will help your riding. Jennifer, thank you so much for sharing your time and your experience with me today. I'm really looking forward to the release of your DVD in 2013. Thanks so much. Thank you.